presenting cannabis and sexuality. Hello, testing, testing. Hello, everyone. We are about to be begin the cannabis Hello? and sexuality panel. Make your way over to the stage if you're interested. So my name is Shega Youngson, and I am the community engagement manager at Tweed, Canada's largest licensed producer of medical cannabis. And today I have the pleasure of moderating Lyft's first ever Cannabis and Sexuality panel. Shout outs to Lyft for being super on trend with this topic and um, to our amazing panel, which I will introduce in just a moment. Um, although I organize many different types of Tweed community events in and around the GTA, I can't take credit for bringing together our stellar lineup of speakers today. I'm actually stepping in for a colleague of mine, which I'm sure many of you in the room are familiar with, um, Miss Hillary Black. She is the Director of Patient Education and Advocacy at Canopy Growth Corps and uh, founder of the one and only British Columbia Compassionate Club in um, Vancouver. Hillary, unfortunately, could not make it out to Toronto this weekend, uh, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank her publicly for being such an incredibly supportive mentor to myself and other women in the cannabis space. So thank you, Hillary. Okay, let's not waste any time. Let's get down to business. Um, after I introduce our panelists, we're going to get them to uncover the issues women are facing when it comes to their sexual health. After that, we'll discuss the different interventions and treatments uh, women are currently exploring. And then we'll get the panel to enlighten us on the emerging uh, cannabis-focused therapies that uh, we can now start playing around with. Finally, we'll end with a Q&A, so we'll give you guys an opportunity to ask a few questions, and uh, that'll be that. So let's get right to it. Okay, I'll start with Dr. Bell right here to my left. Dr. Bell is a family physician and clinical researcher in Toronto. He is assistant professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto and on the active staff of the Humber River Hospital. He is a recipient of the College of Family Physicians of Canada Award of Excellence. Some of his activities include, um, he's, been, he's quite involved at the uh, Canadian Cardiovascular Society, um, on the board of directors of the Thrombosis Canada, Hypertension Canada, and is uh, on the Canadian Stroke Network Professional Development Committee. Dr. Bell's involvement in continuing medical education includes the development and presentation of many national projects. He has served as faculty and chair of countless committees and advisory boards dedicated to serving the common interests of the medical profession and the public. His research, commentaries, and letters have been presented and published internationally. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Bell. Thank you. We have next to Dr. Bell, Dr. Michael Hart. He is the founder and medical director of Ready to Go Clinic, a cannabis-focused clinic in London, Ontario. Uh, in September of 2002, Mike began studying nutritional biochemistry at Memorial University and completed his degree in 2006. After completing his under undergraduate degree, he obtained his medical degree at Sabah School of Medicine in the Netherlands. Uh, Mike began his, me his family medi medicine residency at the University of Western Ontario, Schulich School of Medicine, and completed the program in 2012. Um, he has persistently sought out the latest breakthroughs in nutrition and fitness literature and applied it to his knowledge and practice base. He is constantly in pursuit of becoming the fittest and healthiest person that he can possibly be and feels that his passion can translate into better care for his patients. Dr. Hart believes that everyone has the ability to create an extraordinary life for themselves. He is consistently reading the latest psychology in order to provide the best mental health care for his patients. Thank you for being here, Dr. Hart. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. And finally, we'll go to the other rows on the end of the panel there. <laughs> Dr. Celeste Thurwell, 
She is a psychiatrist and sleep medicine specialist with a background in neurosurgery, neuroscience research, and pain management. Her clinical practice focuses on treating insomnia, PTSD, concussion, and chronic pain using cutting-edge neuroscience-based techniques such as medical cannabis, laser therapy, EMDR, and yoga. She is also a tantric goddess and guru, studies tantric yoga. Um, she's been studying tantric yoga for over two decades. She founded the Sleep Wake Awareness Program, or SWAP, in 2014. SWAP uses an integrative, multi-module approach to healing that assesses patients on a physical, biochemical, electrical grid, and neuro-emotional level. Her integrative approach combines Western medicine with Eastern philosophy to add to help her patients move forward towards optimum health, empowerment, and bliss with the added benefit of greater awareness and mind-blowing sex. She will speak to us today about sex as energy exchange and an opportunity to use cannabis as a means of expanding our awareness and evolving our consciousness during sex, leading to optimal health. Thank you so much for being here today, Celeste. Thank you. Okay, so we've gotten through the intros, and uh, I just want to see a show of hands of people who are currently using cannabis to enhance their, their sexual health. Who wants to own up to it? Okay, okay. All right. Why do you ask them who has had sex in the last 24 hours? Who's had oral sex in the last 24 hours? Who has had heightened sensation sex and gone to another state of reality using cannabis in the last 24 hours? Woo! Wow. Kudos to you guys. <laughs> okay, so let's start by uncovering the issue. Let's present the problem. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Bell. Can we hear about your perspective on the current state of women's sexual health, the issues you're seeing with your patients, and the importance of treating these symptoms and experiences as health issues? Sure, thanks. The, the first thing that I think is, is fairly well known, but is the elephant in the room, is that female sexuality and the ability to enjoy sex for women is a gigantic problem. Uh, there's excellent evidence suggesting that it involves at, at least 40% of the female population of some form of, form, form of sexual dysfunction. And going beyond that, uh, about 12% or one in eight, it's severe enough to be causing a significant impact on their overall quality of life. Let's face it, sex is an important part of life, and if, and if you're not adequately able to enjoy it, you're missing an important part of, part of life. And there is just so little that, that we can do, certainly pharmacologically, for women compared to men. You know, for men, we've got lots of solutions. Uh, we've, got, we've got Viagra, we've got testosterone replacement when they're, when they're lacking. We just, we just don't have that for women. And, and in, in my role as a family doc, it's very frustrating to see patients come in looking for solutions, uh, looking to their doctor for solutions to uh, their sexual dysfunction. And I've really got, you know, some things to offer them in terms of uh, general well-being, approach to life. Uh, uh, but, you know, there's nothing, uh, nothing hard, no quick fixes really available quite yet. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Let's move on to you, Dr. Hart. Same thing. Let's let's talk about the issues you're seeing. Um, and I know that you, you do focus on lifestyle as well, and maybe you want to touch on how that's impacting uh, women's sexual health. Okay, sure. So thanks for the question. Um, I think that I want to answer this in uh, two parts. So first of all, I think a lot of the issue with women and, and sex has to do with uh, anxiety and the fact that when they are in the moment, they actually cannot be in the moment. Um, and that's uh, probably a lot of the issues with most of the women out there. And what cannabis can do sometimes is uh, help women be put into the moment. And then when you're being put into the moment, uh, then you can enjoy the experience that much more. Um, but we wanted to, to also touch on uh, lifestyle factors. So um, a women's sex drive comes from testosterone. So we know that uh, men have testosterone, but women also have testosterone, and that's where their sex drive comes from as well. So in my practice, I actually see women uh, for a low libido, and I will test their free testosterone levels. And if they do have low free testosterone levels, 
um, then I do usually prescribe a small amount of compounded testosterone. And it does, uh, you know, appear to uh, affect their sex drive positively very, very well. And it can also give them a little bit of boost in their overall well-being and, and their energy. And it can actually even help with their um, anxiety as well. So I think that it's, it's always really important to touch on the um, hormonal component. Um, and then <clears throat> you mentioned too about lifestyle factors. So if someone doesn't want to go straight to uh, testosterone compounded cream, you know, what, what could, could they do? Um, well, there's a couple different things. Um, strength training is, is probably the number one thing for, for women and for men to increase your uh, testosterone. So that's something that um, can be implemented almost right away. And then the other uh, supplement that I sometimes use is maca powder. Um, and a lot of women are on SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors for anxiety. Um, and one of the side effects of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, unfortunately, is low libido. So when we're trying to treat women's depression or their anxiety uh, with some of these SSRIs, sometimes we're actually inducing low libido, and MACA has been shown to, to uh, help that. So that's uh, been my approach. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll move do on to Dr. Thurwell now. Uh, same question. Let's present the issue, women's sexual health. What are women experiencing? But as my fellow woman sister goddess on the panel, um, I'd also like us to guide, um, I'd li also like you to guide us through what you've described to me as a much needed sexual revolution that we, we need to participate in and encourage. And uh, just around the current philosophy around pleasure and um, the sort of dualistic notion behind what's, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and how that perhaps inhibits pleasure altogether for women. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, uh, sexual intimacy is a, for me at least, is an exchange of energy. And it's the most subtle form of communication that can happen between two individuals. So I want to take you through a tantric exercise right now. Pair up, two by two. Does everybody have a partner? Turn around, look at each other in the eye. Doesn't matter if it's male, male, female, male. It's all an exchange of energy. Sex is just an energy exchange. Okay, what you're gonna do is take your right hand and put it over the heart of the other person. Put them over. Put your hand over their heart, look at them in the eye, and say, I give you my truth and my trust. 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 If you can't say that to someone honestly, you have no business spreading your legs or penetrating them. The reason why sex is so difficult is to treat, it, it's not, it needs to be addressed on a multimodal level, a physical level as, as we suggested, a biochemical level as we suggested. The nervous system is an electrical grid, so the electrical grid of the body needs to be well maintained. And then there's the neuroemotional piece. You can have different types of sex with different intentions. And now I'll speak to you as a goddess, a tantric guru. You have seven energy centers in your body. The, one, the base one is the root. It grounds you like a plant. It has roots. There's another center, which is your sexual center. There's another center that's your energy power center. There's your heart center. There's your throat center. There's your why center. And then there's a center that shoots out into the universe. You can have sex from all those different levels. You can have aggressive sex. You can have warrior sex, you can have loving sex, you can have honest, true sex, and you can even have sex by looking at someone directly through the eyes and exchanging your, your, your heart and your soul's energy. What cannabis was originally given to in India and China was as a device to expand consciousness and allow full energy f flow through the body. So as we know in basic science research, lower dosages of medical cannabis can heighten sensation and bring fresh blood supply to the organs 
and to the flesh. So you have heightened sensation. Slightly higher dosages of different compounds will allow you to turn off the rat race that goes off in your head so you can be present and focused. So the role that medical marijuana has is very dose dependent, is formulation dependent, and it depends on where you are in your journey of A, knowing yourself, and B, knowing your partner. But to have mind-blowing sex, there's no doubt there needs to be absolute trust and a connection to, into your heart first and the heart of the other person. I'll just leave it at that for now. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. So we'll bring it back to you, Dr. Bell. Let's talk about, um, you know, some current treatments women are exploring, but you, you have some experience uh, prescribing cannabis in these situations as well, uh, particularly around um, a product that was just introduced on the market for you. Um, so let's talk about just what, what you're um, introducing women to and, and, and how it's working. Sure. Uh, well, you know, as, as I say, patients come to me with, uh, with sexual dysfunction issues. I do a very broad spectrum of, uh, of family medicine, and certainly it's there. The first thing that I think has to be established is what exactly is the sexual dysfunction that we're dealing with? Is this a matter of anorgasmia? Is it an arousal issue? Uh, is it a relationship issue? Perhaps the best thing is, you know, perhaps just to find a new husband. Uh, is, is it an, an issue of sexual pain? Is it what we call dyspareunia? Uh, is it painful to have intercourse? And I think based on that is sort of the first thing that you're going to do to uh, approach the patient. Uh, you know, pharmacologic solutions are out there sort of, and we're going to talk about women. And, and, and Mike, you, you brought up um, testosterone therapy. And there is some data to suggest that testosterone uh, improves uh, sexual function in women. Uh, the sad truth is that it's not particularly effective. It certainly is not a panacea. Uh, most of the data tells us that um, in postmenopausal women, in combination with estrogen therapy, that there is perhaps an increase of less than one satisfying sexual encounter uh, per month. And the data in women who are not on estrogen replacement therapy postmenopausal is even worse. And in premenopausal women, where we have studies uh, without uh, estrogen on top of testosterone, we have seen virtually no benefit at all. Uh, and on the other side of that, we see, you know, things that might not enhance uh, sexuality, including growth of facial hair uh, and acne. Not particularly aphrodisiac. Uh, not particularly uh, no, sexy. Not real sexy stuff. Some of the other stuff that's around, uh, there was a product that was recently launched in the U.S. called uh, Addy, Addy, A D D Y I, uh, which was rejected multiple times for the F by the FDA for lack of uh, efficacy. And uh, so it's not particularly efficacious. And further, it has to be taken on a daily basis every day uh, to maintain blood levels. Uh, and it cannot be used with alcohol. Uh, and it causes nausea and somnolence and increases satisfying sexual encounters by less than 0.5 uh, per month. Not too useful. Now, what about the evidence for cannabis? So you know, I, I, the evidence for cannabis is actually the best that we have. Inhaled cannabis. Um, has been shown in a number of studies that were conducted mostly through the 70s and 80s in users who were given validated surveys. It showed benefit in quality of orgasm, ability uh, to achieve orgasm, in orgasm frequency. And interestingly, these studies also looked at uh, the, the uh, enjoyment of sex. And, and some of the endpoints included things like how much did sensory changes improve? vision, smell, auditory sensations, all of them positive, all of them positive. And, and as was mentioned, it's a bimodal effect. I think, Mike, you mentioned that. When we see people using excessive amounts of cannabis, more than two joints, sexual function actually goes down, or we certainly see an attenuation of the benefit. Uh, when we uh, use one or less joints uh, of inhaled cannabis, these studies were done in the 70s, so we really can't talk much about vaping. Uh, that's where we see uh, the peak effect. We saw it in motivational, so aphrodisiac effect. Uh, we saw it in hedonic pleasure uh, effect. Uh, and we saw it in sensory, uh, as I mentioned. One of the endpoints was cuddling. And it talked about how much patients enjoyed cuddling more uh, with cannabis compared to without. And that was actually one of the most positive uh, impacts that we saw. And I, I like a clinical trial that looks at cuddling. Cuddling releases oxytocin, which is the uh, love hormone in the brain. So 
your first flash fuck is adrenaline and dopamine, your addictive, uh, the addictive drug, but cuddling is what fortifies love with oxytocin. Thank you. So, Dr. Hart, um, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, just your approach towards cannabis and, and um, therapies with women and helping them, uh, you know, just get to a point where they're uh, dealing with the issues they're experiencing. You also talked about um, performance and men. Um, can you talk about how cannabis can play a role in men's sexual health? We'll bring them up briefly. I mean, we have to. Um, and then we'll move on to um, Celeste and we'll, we'll touch on the tantric sex. Bring them up briefly, meaning men. Men. I mean, yeah, that's okay. who they're, our yes, subjects they, in, yes, in they, some they of do these awaken activities. Yes, briefly. Very briefly. So for men, uh, cannabis can be used to enhance sexual performance, but it's definitely not like a pro erectile agent, like say like Viagra or something like that. To my knowledge, um, maybe Dr. Bell would know more. I don't think it increases um, nitrous oxide um, and can uh, be a pro erectile uh, agent. Um, so <clears throat> I simply use uh, testosterone, as I stated previously, just because that is the, the foundation of, uh, e of increasing one's sex drive. But I think Dr. Bell also made a really good point about how it's multifactorial. And, you know, you can give someone testosterone all they want, but if they don't have, you know, a special connection with someone, then, um, you know, they're probably just going to be having sex by themselves. So um, we, all, we always want to approach it from a multifactorial approach, make sure that uh, the therapies that we're using are, in fact, working, and also, too, to monitor for side effects because um, if you give testosterone to, to women, that can induce uh, side effects, and, uh, but they generally are reversible. So um, if women do experience a little bit of facial hair or something like that, usually we just have to decrease the dose, and then it usually just goes away right away. And Dr. Bell, you brought up alcohol. Obviously, we all know it's alcohol is a substance that many people use to enhance pleasure or get to a point where they're ready to get down to business. Um, we talked a little bit about the drawbacks of alcohol and how cannabis can, can actually be a better substitute. Do you want to bring that up? And Celeste, we also discussed alcohol. We'll get into that and, um, you know, just, just your therapy with, with couples and the tantric side. So uh, my issue with, with alcohol really, again, it comes down to the hormones. So um, the more alcohol you drink, uh, the lower your testosterone level is, is going to go. And with low testosterone levels, again, in men and women, that's going to decrease your overall libido. So if you're looking to um, enhance your libido or you're looking to um, you know, just simply relax at the end of the night, if having one or two glasses of wine um, is less likely to enhance your libido than, say, um, using a proper strain of, of cannabis that you found to be effective. Um, and that's largely, again, due to the uh, hormonal reasons. Celeste, enlighten us. I, I just want to talk about the elephant or the phallus in the room. The, the major issue between men and women is women have a much slower arousal curve so one thing I encourage my couples to do is, is to foreplay with, with cannabis oil, which helps heighten the senses. And if you use toys, you can actually lubricate your toys with the cannabis oil. And it's, it's an organic, plant-based lubricant, natural lubricant. The other thing is there is now, uh, some of the dispensaries have a bath bomb that's made of CBD and THC. And apparently, if you, you, if you take the bath with the bath bomb, your bodies and your, your, your whole skin becomes heightened sensually. The main thing I want to introduce to you is the concept that men can in fact be multi-orgasmic and they can maintain erections for, for hours on end. It's the only thing in this culture they're not taught to do so. In the ancient tantric cultures, they were brought, taught to bring the semen to the tip of their penis and then bring it back so that they could remain hard for three to four hours and have continuous sex for, for that amount of time, allowing the woman to finally reach orgasm and have her time to, to relax and reach orgasm. I would suggest you look into the books, The Multi-Orgasmic Male and The Multi-Orgasmic Couple, and alongside with 
experimenting with the different strains and formulations to enhance your, your sex life. Okay, perfect. Um, so that kind of brings us uh, to the topic of phoria. I know, uh, Dr. Bell, you wanted to share a little bit about what patients are, are experiencing and, and the feedback you're getting. Sure. So uh, I, I'm a very evidence-based guy, and I talked to you about the evidence for uh, inhaled uh, cannabis, and, it, and it's solid. So really the question arises, you know, can we make use of topically applied um, cannabis oils to enhance sex? And I would love to see the research on that. Unfortunately, we don't have any. But what we do have is patient testimonials, and what we also have is a product that has been specifically marketed uh, as a topical treatment for sexual dysfunction or for sexual enhancement in women. And, and Foria is, is the product, as, as you mentioned, Shega. So we're, we're talking now about a 15% uh, THC oil in, um, uh, in, an, in an edible oil formulation, in, in coconut oil, essentially. Uh, one milliliter of the substance is applied uh, to the clitoris and to the inner labia. It's given 15 or 20 minutes to absorb and uh, we are getting very positive feedback from patients who are trying this uh, to either treat specific sexual dysfunction disorders, uh, including uh, lack of arousal, uh, lack of orgasm, uh, and even lack of desire. It can be helpful for some women, according to their testimonials, for painful sex as well. It can be a treatment for dyspareunia. Uh, as Celeste has very uh, appropriately pointed out, uh, it's an excellent natural lubricant, which may play some of the role. Interestingly, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem to cause any euphoric effects. One milliliter, so it's 15 milligrams uh, of THC applied to an area that absorbs uh, drugs very well. But interestingly, uh, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of euphoria associated uh, with the application of phoria to the, uh, to the clitoris and, and labia. But what should be mentioned is 15% THC is pretty effective if it's taken orally, so it can have actually a profound effect uh, upon the partner. It's a hell of a way to get high, uh, if you will. Something that, that Another are, mode of administration yeah, that yeah. we don't usually talk about at these no, things. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> It's, so, so the effect that it's having seems to be quite independent from the euphoric effect that we are seeing uh, that's an association with inhaled cannabis uh, that I mentioned earlier. And I have to caution everybody, though, that, that um, these medium-chain triglyceride oils uh, that are used in the manufacture of Foria and in many cosmetics and in many edible products uh, dissolve latex. So uh, it can be a problem, uh, and they cannot be used with, uh, with latex condoms. Uh, for fear of failure uh, of condoms in that situation. So, you know, that's the other thing I would mention. My, my experience uh, with the product uh, has been a bit mixed. It's been only available on the market for a fairly short period of time. Um, and like I say, we don't have a great deal of evidence to back it up. So like a lot of what we do in cannabinoid medicine, we're dealing with ends of one. Look, we've tried other processes for you. We've perhaps tried Wellbutrin, which also can be uh, sometimes effective for women with sexual dysfunction. Uh, nothing has really worked. They're not willing to inhale cannabis. So why don't we try a topical? And, uh, you know, my ends of ones, there's been some definite positive, uh, positive responses. Thank you. Dr. Hart, uh, do you want to bring up just, just the evidence you're seeing, the testimonials your patients are coming to you with, and, and just cannabis uh, as a whole, uh, the way you're, you're prescribing it for these issues at, at your clinic? Sure, and I just want to touch on to what uh, what Dr. Bell said because I think it's really, really uh, important that um, we emphasize what he said because we've had uh, excellent like pro erectile drugs since the 80s for men. Uh, we really do not have anything for women like we've touched on um, other than testosterone therapy. It's a huge issue for for, for women. Um, and, you know, Dr. Alan Bell is a very well-respected family medicine physician who uh, is very evidence-based. So, you know, when, when he's saying that there's a new product out there, it's almost like saying that there's, like, a new Viagra. Like, it truly is, could be revolutionary for women and, and, and sexual health. So I think it's really important that we uh, get that point uh, across today. And uh, I thank Dr. Bell for, for bringing that up. What, what I would really like to see is somebody investing the necessary funds to do the trial. 
to do the clinical research, randomizing women to, to the treatment uh, or to the placebo uh, and see what happens. That, that's really what we need. Dr. Thurwell. I agree, but I also think um, marijuana in general is a chance to um, bring about a revolution in medicine. We need to understand where medicine comes from. It comes from the Age of Enlightenment, where what you could measure was on a biochemical level, and it was also about going out, searching, and destroying the enemy. And so we here on the panel are specialists in disease, and Dr. Mike Hart is making himself into a specialist in health. But I would like to turn sex and marijuana from, instead of focusing on the disease part of it, focusing on the op optimization of health, optimization of wellness. We know that people who have regular sex have better immune systems that are more resistant to the average cold, and that's evidence-based data. We also know that uh, the biochemical makeup of, of semen is actually an excellent antidepressant. So I believe that sex now needs, and the world in general, and medicine need, in general needs to move I from a male. I can't believe a woman just said that. When moved from a male, a male perspective to a female perspective, and then even into a more balanced male and female perspective of sexuality, of looking at medicine and med medical marijuana as a way to change health into focusing on wellness rather than going and destroying disease. And I'm just so thankful that you're sitting here and, and becoming our ends of ones, ends of two, ends of three that will continue to bring your story forward. For me in the medical cannabis practice, it's been very challenging. I have some patients who come to me, my doctor threatened that if I try cannabis, I'm, they're no, I'm not, no longer gonna be their patient. I've heard of doctors threatening to report me for starting patients on cannabis. And I do believe we need the research, but we also need to be consummate clinicians who work hand in hand with our patients to listen very carefully and help you teach us what is working for you so that we can design good questions for good randomized controlled trials. And so I, I ask that the people in our profession become like the consummate clinicians of old, like Osler, that we remain consummate clinicians and scientists and listen very carefully to what your experience is, which is why I'm here today to hear about what your questions and your thoughts are. Thanks. You know, I, I just want to reinforce that. You know, we have evidence from as far back as 1200 BC in ancient Sanskrit, Sanskrit texts that uh, talk about the sexual benefits of, of cannabis. Uh, and, and yet, through all these years, nobody, or, or the, the, the medical profession, the mainstream, shall we say, has really not done the necessary work to bring this, to bring this forward. I spent a great deal of my time uh, educating not just the public in forums like this, but educating other physicians on how to uh, properly authorize medical cannabis uh, under our country's legislation and our provincial legislation and, and to ensure that they're doing it correctly and utilizing it. And yet, I'm still meeting a tremendous, tremendous amount of resistance uh, because of the baggage uh, that cannabis is, is perhaps uh, carrying. You know, I, I think our, our Prime Minister is going a long way to, to getting rid of some of that baggage by, by making it a legal product. But I think you as consumers need to go to your physicians and not necessarily just to cannabis clinics, but to your family doctors, to your specialists and saying, you know, can cannabis help me? You know, we're, today we're talking about sexual dysfunction. You know, can you talk to your gynecologist and say, you know, uh, I, I heard from a, a panel of physicians that cannabis can be helpful in sexual dysfunction. Can you, can you help me with that? You know, maybe you're gonna tweak them to start doing a little bit of their own research and learning and educating them uh, about what they can do to help solve uh, this very significant problem. 40% of the female population, unacceptable. Totally. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Dr. Hart, do you want, also want to talk about just the barriers that, you know, you see day-to-day uh, -day in your practice and in, in the health world and, you know, how, you know, just promoting cannabis access and helping patients discover this medicine is revolutionizing, you know, healthcare altogether? 
Well, it's still uh, sometimes difficult to find um, a, a physician in, in Ontario or in Canada, for that matter, that is willing to uh, see someone for um, a cannabis prescription. Um, and there are definitely more and more clinics that are that, that are popping up. Um, but what I've really tried to do is I just believe that cannabis is just another. It's an excellent tool, but it's really just another tool in our in our in our toolbox. So um, you know, the name of my clinic is Ready to Go Clinic, and, and I made the name that that name because I don't want it to be associated with healing or trauma or anything like that. I want my patients just to be able to get better, get back to work, get going, be able to get working out, be able to do the things that they want to enjoy. Um, and I think that's really where the, the focus in cannabis should be. Um, and it's, uh, I, I do appreciate you know, cannabis uh, clinics. I think that um, a lot of them are wonderful and they can provide a lot of specialized knowledge and that's definitely needed right now in this time. But um, going forward in, in, in family medicine, uh, I think we need to educate um, more family physicians and more family physicians just need to incorporate it as a medicine into their uh, practice. And before we go to the Q&A, Celeste, just some final words from you. Anything we, we haven't touched on yet? Um, I think you have a fan club here. All the men are probably part of a, a fan club now uh, after your comments earlier. Um, but yeah, before we open it up to, to the audience, um, any final words? I'm much of the same mind as, as Dr. Hart is, I, and I've said this to the licensed producers that came my way, uh, and as I've learned, medical cannabis is just a piece in the puzzle of overall health. It's a very useful tool, and many of my patients are able to stop the polypharmacy that they're on. They've been able to reduce and decrease their pain medication their, and other medications as well. But I really think that the most key point is that, that there needs to be a shift from looking at uh, medicine as disease into health and wellness and optimizing wellness. And actually, the root word of health is actually the word to become is the root word of health is whole. So from the Eastern perspective, we already are completely whole and have all the knowledge of everything we could possibly need within ourselves. Your body innately knows what you need and is telling you messages, but we've been so programmed to live, listen to doctors and run here and run there rather than stop long enough to have a yoga practice, a workout practice, a meditation practice. So we sit and we ask ourselves, what is it that I actually do need? Do I, do, what is it that I actually need to be healthy and in balance and using my own unique gifts optimally? Do I actually need that, that beautiful pair of jeans or do I actually need to eat some fresh organic vegetables? I think it's all about creating greater awareness, which, which is what marijuana is about. Like I said at the beginning, it was given by Shiva historically or through the lore, it was given by Shiva to mankind as a boon to create greater consciousness. And I really believe that when Bear had marijuana sort of banned and outlawed when they came out with aspirin in 1920, and, and the, you know, the pulp and paper people had hemp repressed, the American Constitution had been written on hemp paper, but God knows we don't know that. And when the pharmaceuticals came along and had marijuana suppressed because it had been used, as Dr. Hart said, in the ancient cultures in India and China, and even into the 1920s for, for pain, very much in North America, we have to realize that that was repressed because they wanted to take control of your health and your mind and your consciousness. So claiming marijuana is claim in part of the evolution that needs to take place to claim back your sexuality and control of where you lead your life and the gifts, the special gifts each one of you have been given. And for me, that's complete health. Let's talk about reclaiming sexuality. Um, what are the pointers or, you know, how do you help your patients that are, are super disconnected from that part of life and, and are, are having issues in that regard, you know, outside of prescribing treatments and, and whatnot. How are you advising them to reclaim sexuality that's repressed yeah. in our culture day, day in but, and day out? Well, first and foremost, with sexuality or with any illness, we have to stop and ground. Remember I said one of the, the chakras, the energy centers was the roots. Most people are unrooted. Trauma can unroot you. Being alone in an urban 
environment can I review? So we need to stop and ground. So a big piece of the first six months is taking up a yoga practice, a meditation practice, a Tai Chi practice, one of those ancient healing arts that makes the nervous system ground itself. Having regular sleep schedule, having a good diet, just basic, basic things. And if there is to the point where we need medication, then we use the medication. The medication is like a band-aid or a brace that holds things together until you can do the underlying physio and get get the, the body and the system back in, in place. Then the next piece is connecting to your heart. You will never have satisfying sex as long as you're not connected into your own heart. You can become a porn addict, you can become the biggest gigolo, but you will never have satisfying, mind-blowing sex until you're grounded, connected in your heart, and learn how to connect with the partner who's in front of you, which is why I had you do that exercise at the very beginning. That's something you can do with yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I give you my truth and my trust and I love you. Some people can't even say I love you to themselves in the mirror. What are we doing having sex with another person without even knowing ourselves? So that's where we start. We start on work on ourselves and then we, we enter out into learning social skills and other skills that help us communicate with others. When, when a patient comes to me with any medical problem, whether it's a sexual dysfunction problem or a chronic back pain or cancer or COPD, you know, the, the first thing I like to tell them is what we need before all else is, I, I like to say rest, shelter, and nutrition. But what I mean by that is how can you optimize your life? Are you, are you eating properly? Are you dedicating enough time uh, to yourself and, and not completely to your job? Are you exercising adequately? Or are you sitting on the couch watching TV? You know, and I think th these are the things that we have to you know, very much ground ourselves in. Everybody is looking for a quick fix. Uh, instant gratification is, is really what we're all seeking, isn't it? And, and so after I think we, we have established some of those things, ensuring that you've got an adequate relationship, and you know, this is just, you know, just some tips to the people in, in the audience. Uh, if you're here, you, know, you may well be in that 40% uh, of women who perhaps aren't having the greatest uh, uh, sex. So first of all, ensure that your overall health is good. Um, speak to your physician, optimize all of that, ensure that your partner uh, is correct. Now, if you're going to go to cannabis, ensure that you're not overdoing it. People go to the gym, they try to uh, be Arnold Schwarzenegger in the first two weeks. It's not gonna happen. So don't, don't overdo it. I would strongly suggest that we've got scientific basis to suggest that the sexual response uh, to cannabis is bimodal. In other words, a good response at low doses, not so much uh, at high doses. Being wasted uh, is not going to enhance your, your sexual uh, enjoyment uh, as much as just a small amount uh, of cannabis would. Dr. Hart? Um, I just want to touch on a point that uh, Dr. Thurwell said earlier, and she was saying that uh, you know sex is more or less just an exchange of, of energies, and and for that you know I, I, I really agree, and I also too just want to touch on uh, relationships, and I think that uh, one thing that makes relationships work is is an exchange of energy, and it has to be an exchange of there has to be a strong masculine energy, and there has to be a strong female energy. Um, and that's for and that's for all relationships. And I think that um, you know men need to channel their their masculine energy, and women need to channel their female energy. And then when you when you are able to do that and you have that exchange, then that creates a very uh, pleasurable sexual experience. Actually, actually, I, I'd put it a step further. I think men and women need to be able to channel both their female and their male energy in the in the spine. There's actually three channels. There's the male channel on the right the female channel on the left, and the central channel in the middle. So in tantric sex, what you're doing is you're creating electric circuit. So you, if you have, if you have, going here and here, so if you have the sexual organs joined and the mouth joined, if you're able to copulate for more than 30 minutes and you keep that sexual circuit going, you're actually energizing, you're creating an energetic circuit that's re-energizing every cell in your body. It, it pushes the electron transport chain through the mitochondria to make more ATP. So you're actually charging yourself. And the thing is, as you move back and forth, both of you between your female and your male channel, eventually the energy shoots from the base of your spine all the way up your spine and at the top of your head 
to the point where what the ancients call the thousand lotus petal explodes and you're at one with the universe at that point. At that point, there's no you and the other. There's only the sense of being at one with the universe and that's enlightenment. So through sex, you can actually reach spiritual enlightenment. The ancients did it. We're not taught about it. I'd encourage you again to read the books, The Multi-Orgasmic Male, The Multi-Orgasmic Couple. And, and I have experienced three times with a tantric master that explosion of energy up my spine and out through the top of my head where we were one with the universe for, for, for at least an hour. So it is possible. And, and if that doesn't work, you, you, you can try for you. <laughs> You have, to, you have to know that it's possible to even to, 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 to gear for it. Thank you for the motivation. I think we're all going to keep that in mind when we're all done with this conference later tonight. <laughs> okay, let's open it up to the audience. Thank you so much. Round of applause, guys, for the speakers, please. Thank you. This was amazing. Okay, I think we have a mic going around for some questions. Put your hands up. Who would like to ask a question? Hi, uh, is it all? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so I have two questions. The first is in your practice and dealing with gender and sex, how do you make sure that you also include transgender women, especially when dealing with hormones and, uh, and uh, transgender women who are going through hormone replacement therapy? So that's my first question. And then my second question is how do you well, is there a different approach that you take with women who are having sex with other women, especially considering, Dr. Hart, what you just said about uh, needing female energy or feminine energy and masculine energy? I can, I can start. Uh, okay, so, so my, my approach to, uh, to transgender patients, and I have a few transgender patients uh, in my practice, is the same as my approach that it would be to everybody else. Uh, the only issue is that you know I don't do transgender medicine per se. I'm not going to be the one who is responsible for prescribing the hormones and whatnot. So I'm just not going to go there. I'm going to work with what we have. Uh, I'm not going to adjust the, the hormone. I may discuss it uh, with their physician who's specializing in that area, how it may be adjusted, you know, how we might uh, alter that cocktail a little bit to improve their sexual response. Uh, but generally speaking, there are the same approaches applied to the transgender population uh, and to the, the gay population, whether it's women having sex with women or men having sex with men. I really don't think that enters into it. The approach is largely the same. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't think that there's anything really specific to, to change in that regard. Mike? Yeah, I, uh, I, I completely agree with, uh, with Dr. Bell, and I, uh, I'm also a family physician, so um, your question and the, uh, and, and the treatments that you mentioned are um, definitely beyond my expertise. I don't have any, uh, any transgendered uh, people in my practice right now, and I, I wouldn't um, take on uh, someone who wanted to become transgendered because it's beyond my, my scope, I would have to refer. Um, and then just touching on the, on the energy thing that, that I mentioned earlier, um, I think it still though applies uh, to, uh, to lesbians and to homosexuals because there's generally still like a, uh, a female and, and a male energy in those relationships. Um, it's gen even though it's, it's two men having sex with each other, two women having sex with each other, there's still generally uh, a male and a female energy in those relationships. So I think that that still uh, applies 100%. It's a fantastic question. Celeste, does, does all, do all those principles apply to um, uh, monogender sex as well and to, and to transsexuals? I, absolutely. When it comes down to, to it, if we're looking at it on a tantric level, we're looking at energies. So it's really, really looking at who's channeling the feminine energy, the, y the yin energy, and who's channeling the, the masculine energy, the yang energy. And that, c that can be played back and forth with. And some people prefer to stay in their couple where one remains the most, more submissive and the other one more dominant. And some couples play it up. But at the end of the day, what really is, for me, the crux of having 
a satisfying s sexual encounter um, is intimacy. And intimacy requires trust and, and communication, regardless of which gender. Anyone else have a question? Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Doesn't have to be about cannabis. Can be about something else if you want. Come on, Melissa. Let's go, Philippe. Okay, we got one last question over here. Yes. All right. Thank you, Shaga, for forcing me against my will to do this. Uh, you're an amazing moderator, by the way. Um, Dr. Thurwell, have you been? To, at doing tantra education sessions with any of your patients or have you been sending them to different workshops at all and what are you doing after this panel yeah because i kind of want to talk to you uh, a little bit after this panel i am i had mentioned this actually because i was talking to some people i'm going to be up at the uh the hotel uh main um area where they have cocktails and whatnot i'm going to be there if anybody wants any couples want to come and speak to me i have been a closet sex therapist for quite some time i've been doing sex therapy for couples as a, in my yoga practice as a yoga teacher and I'm currently just finishing off my kundalini yoga practice I just one last thing I wanted to let you know is and um, that what they called the brahmacharyas who are considered to be the really really enlightened men of, of, of Tantra and Eastern philosophy actually have opened both their female and male channels to the point that the energy shoots up their spine when they sit down and meditate and they're, they are having multiple orgasms with themselves. So they're not, not having sex, they're having perpetual sex within their, within their electrical system. So I'll leave that aside. But I am going to be starting to give lectures. Um, a tantric master is arriving from India this Tuesday night, Ananda Baba, and we will be organizing lectures and workshops at my integrative health clinic, the SWAP clinic. You can look it up, Sleep Wake Awareness Program. He's agreed to teach for the summer uh, some of the ancient tantric techniques and to help couples both at my center and at my organic farm in Caledon. So just look up Sleep Wake Awareness Program and you're welcome to come and train. Thank you. Okay, any more questions before um, everyone goes to the hotel lobby? Because I know you want to talk about this, um, but maybe not in such a public setting. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you,